Mother Henretta, the real church lady. Mother Henretta here, y'all. I got a question for you to ponder. Is man inherently evil or inherently good? Well, don't rack your brains. In Genesis 6 chapter, it talks about the evilness of man. The Bible says that God saw the evil that had permeated the earth and it broke his heart. It grieved him deeply. And he says, my spirit will no longer strive with man. I'm going to give him 120 years to get his act together. And then the Bible says he found favor in Noah. And he chose Noah to build the ark. And y'all know what happened with that ark, right? 120 years of Noah preaching, trying to get people to understand what God want, desired from them and how God's heart is broken. And I'm going to say to y'all right now, God's heart is broken for the things that's going on in this earth. But can you imagine that man is evil and the Bible says 24-7, even when he's sleeping, his thoughts and his heart is culminating evil. So he gives Noah the task of building the ark for 120 years. He did that. Can you imagine you working on a project for 120 years? We don't even live to be 120 years. Maybe a rare instance that we live to be past 100, but it's very rare that we live that long. So I'm gonna say to you, if you got a project, uh, you know, you wanna put a deck on your house, or you wanna build a ramp or something like that, or you wanna put a, an addition, well, you better get to stepping and clack a lacking because guess what? You can do all that stuff when you're strong and virile in your 20s and 30s and maybe part of your 40s. But boy, when you start hitting 45, 50, 60, it's curtains. You ain't going to get nothing done. But getting back on the subject, that was a sad part. So Noah builds his ark, just like God told him, follow God's instructions to the T. And the Bible says it was time for Noah to go into the ark. And Noah goes into the ark. He takes his three sons his three sons' wives and his wife, eight people, and of course you know he got the animals, and he's on the ark. He goes in there, God shut the door, the Bible says. Now that just tells you that once he pulled that ladder up, because nobody else was getting in there, and he goes inside the ark, and they say the Bible says God shut the door. When God shuts the door, nobody can open it. And when God opens the door, nobody can close it. That's just a little blessing for y'all right there. Let you know. Nobody can undo what God is doing for you. So can you imagine Noah is in there and he's got his small little family, but then he's got a larger family outside the ark that's going to perish in the flood. He got sisters and brothers and aunties and uncles and nieces and nephews and grandnet, all of that. They were outside that ark and they all perished. But do you know that there are going to be people in our family who are also going to be left behind because they did not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and the ark was a representation of Jesus and the salvation that God has provided for us. We're going to have family members that are going to be lost. As a matter of fact, some of y'all right now are going to be lost if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I don't want any of my relatives to be left behind. Not one of them. But I can't do anything about that but introduce them to the gospel. Even though God destroyed the earth because of the evilness of man, when Noah came out of that ark with his family, God said to Noah, even though the inclination of man's heart and thoughts are evil since childhood, I will not destroy the earth with water again. Now listen to that. Evil still existed because it existed inside of men. We carry evil in us. We pass it on to our children. That's how come somebody would be wondering, there's some bad kids. Well, <laughs> evil. But I want to say to you, are you going to be on that ark? Are you going to be on the ark? Are you going to let God shut the door on the ark? 
And this is for those that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And for those who do know him as their Lord and Savior, we got to pray and minister and preach to our family and friends and loved ones. Because I don't want any of my loved ones to be left behind. But I know I can't do anything about that. Except introduce them to Jesus Christ. Which is the best thing that I could do for them. Whew. This is some heavy stuff, ain't it? Some family members going to be left behind.